Uh, just a little bit, uh, I just wanted to start off with a little bit about Feeding America. Feeding America is the nation's leading uh, domestic hunger relief charity. Let's see, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can see your screen, Wayne. All right, I think we're on the right slide now. Okay. Um, the, it's, uh, the Food Bank Network was founded in 1979 uh, as Second Harvest. In 2009, the name was changed to Feeding America. It was founded by a man named uh, John Van Hengel. Uh, John started the, the first food bank, um, mainly because he heard that a woman um, that he was, when he was volunteering, heard about a woman that was uh, dumpster diving um, out back of retail stores to, to, in order to feed her children. Um, you know, he thought that there had to be a better and safer way to feed the hungry. So he started the first food bank, uh, which is St. Mary's Food Bank in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, you know, our mission is to feed America's hungry uh, through a na na nationwide network of member food banks and engage our country in the fights and hunger. Uh, 47 million Americans are served annually, including 14 million children and 7 million seniors. Securing, uh, we, just, we secure and distribute 3.3 billion meals annually, and we have uh, just about 200 food banks and approximately 58,000 local charitable agencies that we distribute the food to. So food safety focus at Feeding America, you know, food safety is a, um, uh, it must be part of our culture at Feeding America because it's a foundational component of what we do every day, which is handle food. So it's extremely important that we handle it safely. Um, you know, and food banks are at the end of the supply chain. We get a lot of food banks that, uh, you know, retailers no longer deem sellable, mainly for quality reasons. And we get a lot of products towards the end of their shelf life um, and a lot of close to code products. So it's very important that we, that we handle those products safely and distribute them uh, very quickly. And then we're also serving a very vulnerable population as, uh, as Sid mentioned in his presentation. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we, we serve uh, 12 million children and 7 million seniors, and then many others that have weakened immune systems due to various medical conditions. So Feeding America has a contract, um, has, has a lot, we've heard in uh, previous presentations, there's a lot of contract talk today. So we do have a contract with every, uh, every one of our food banks, and in that contract we have uh, food safety built in. So there are food safety requirements, um, you know, that we do have for, for perishable foods um, that we accept from, uh, from retail and hospitality establishments. And uh, as you can see, you know, we have um, uh, some of them listed here on this slide uh, that they must be coming from a, uh, a licensed food service establishment um, and they must be uh, in compliance with all state and local food handling laws. And then it's very important, obviously, to make sure that the foods um, are held at the proper temperature. Uh, cold foods kept cold, frozen foods kept frozen, and then hot foods kept um, hot. And it's also um, one of the requirements, too, is to be, that the foods be protected from environmental contaminants during display or service. <clears throat> and they're not to include um, foods that are previously uh, served to the public, such as self-service buffets or um, you know, foods that might have been out, um, just out in the open as samples. And then also that the, the food must be a first generation food, which means that it's uh, not something that's been, then, that's been or, um, that cooked, re uh, cooled, and reheated for a, for a second time. And then also the food must be packaged in a first use uh, for food grade packaging. So here are some program guidelines um, for retail and hospitality establishments that we use and that are in our, detailed out in our contract. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the previous one, it's very important to keep foods, cold foods at 41 degrees or lower, um, zero degrees or lower for frozen, and 135 degrees or above for hot foods. Um, we do um, require passive and or active temperature retention systems be used uh, during transportation. Um, an example of a passive device would be a thermal blanket or a cooler with ice packs, um, and an active device would be um, refrigeration unit, freezer unit, or, or a, a refrigerated truck. And then we do require that sample temperatures must be taken um, and documented by the member or agency at time of pickup and or delivery. So it's, uh, we do require that they carry a thermometer with them. And uh, we, you know, to ensure 
the food is properly labeled is very important uh, prior to distribution. And we have uh, you know, Feeding America labeling guidelines um, for our food banks and agencies to follow. And then another way we look to uh, reduce our liability in the area of food safety is um, proper training. So um, that's huge, and it's a part of our contract. So you know, members must comply with the following food safety requirements, food safety training requirements, and we do require uh, SurfSafe certified managers at every one of our food banks. Um, in addition to that, um, we do require that um, the staff and volunteers uh, also go through surf, or, um, food safety training. Uh, we have just uh, recently created a, um, a customized uh, food handler training um, with SurfSafe, and it's specific for food banking. And then there, uh, the food banks are also required to train their agencies in the area of food safety. So they must, um, on an annual basis, uh, provide training for, uh, for all of their agencies that they serve in their area. And again, we recommend that that, that custom food training um, for food banking, food handler training for food banking, uh, when it's uh, food pantries and such, uh, because it's really geared more towards that. Now, they don't have to use that training, but, uh, but that's the one we, that we do recommend. But they do have to pr um, provide some sort of training for their agencies. And some just some things to uh, consider. Um, you know, never assume that a product uh, cannot be donated. Always, uh, you know, make sure you look into it first. Um, and then also, if you have any questions regarding donating foods, make sure you, that you contact your local food bank by using our food bank, food bank locator, which is at www.feedingamerica.org. Uh, it's right on the main landing page, so it's very easy to find, and all you have to do is put in your zip code, and you can find uh, the local food bank in your area. And then we also have a, a, a more comprehensive list of food banks, uh, our, our member food banks throughout the country um, by state. And food banks can turn short-coated product, perishable products, very quickly. So if you're a donor, make sure you keep that in mind. And then food banks, you know, our food banks adhere to uh, the same food safety standards as the food uh, food industry. You know, they're they're audited by our Feeding America staff uh, per our contract, and then we also take part in uh, third-party food safety audits. All of our food banks are, are currently uh, doing those as well. And uh, that concludes my presentation. I'd just like to thank you very much for uh, for allowing me to present on this panel.